Hi y'all, I'm Amanda and I'm a junior at Vanderbilt University majoring in human and organizational development and minoring in Japanese. I would argue that the first year experience at the Martha Rivers Ingrams Commons at Vanderbilt is one of the most important first year experiences. Well that and it's one of the most important experiences for Vanderbilt to market to prospects who want to apply and get that cash. And when it comes to marketing, Vanderbilt does a great job of painting luxury to its applicants. Beautiful new dorms built in 2008, generous room space, high ceilings, common rooms on each floor flooding with community, and access to the common center where you have amenities and food, steps from your house. What they don't like to tell you is that the commons is composed of two sides, five new houses and five historic houses. These five historic houses are quite different from the new houses that you're shown. Smaller rooms, no high ceilings, for the most part, no common rooms on each floor, and for a few of the historic houses, no laundry, and sometimes a much longer trek to the common center. You don't see these first year houses in the brochures. You definitely don't see them in the first year move in videos that Vanderbilt produces. And again, that's because Vanderbilt doesn't want you to know that they exist, at least until you're there. My first year at Vanderbilt, I lived in what was argued to be the worst house on commons, West House. I saw the ins and outs of this place as West House president when I lived there and got as much out of the commons first year experience as I could. So today I thought I'd share my overall experience of living in the worst house on commons and give an overall grade of my experience. Experience. I'm giving my completely honest opinion. I'm not holding in on the goods or the bad. I'm just gonna tell it as it is. I'll be breaking down West House into four categories room quality, quality of amenities in the overall house, location, and community. Then I'll give my final thoughts in an overall grade. So let's get started. West House receives the exact same furniture as all the other houses on commons. A loftable bed, a desk with two chest drawers that you can divide into three parts, and like a hybrid desk chair rocking chair thing. They're all standard across the houses, so there's not really a difference there. However, rooms in West House are small. While Gillette is known to have the smallest rooms on commons, West isn't really much of an upgrade. When you have a small room and a roommate, or roommates if you're in a triple, you're gonna wanna loft your bed. West doesn't have high ceilings, so when you do that, you're definitely gonna be able to touch the ceiling and you might even hit your head on it in the mornings. This can sometimes be a benefit for people because they can check in the ceilings to make sure there's nothing suspicious up there, like rats or bugs? I don't know. The lighting is definitely dimmer in West House, but that's something across all historic houses. New houses have more lights in them. And you can definitely tell that your room is old, both in good and bad ways. For example, you cannot control the exact numerical temperature of your room in West House. To control the air in your room, you have to go up to the air conditioner, which is a giant unit sticking up and taking quite a bit of space in your room and opening it up and looking at the knob. The knob has three settings, low, medium, and high. That determines how strong the air will be blowing out of your unit. The the air will be cold when it's above 50 degrees outside, and it'll be warm when it's below 50 degrees outside. Meanwhile, new houses are able to control their exact temperature. You want it to be 90 degrees in the middle of summer? You got it. You want it to be colder than the freezing temperatures outside during the winter? You got it. Personally, my air conditioning unit broke multiple times throughout the year. I sat through hot and humid days where my air wasn't changing. I spent a night where my room was literally 40 degrees while everyone else's units were working. And sometimes I had to wait days for maintenance to come and fix my unit. However, these units are not unique to West House. You'll find them in all the historic houses, so at least you're surviving together. For some good news, unless you're in a corner room slash triple, you're gonna have walk-in closets at West House, which is a very unique feature. There's a thick wooden door and you can literally walk into your closet. It's not huge, but it's definitely an upgrade from the new houses. New houses have closets that do not have doors. They are completely open and residents typically buy a shower rod and a shower curtain to hang over the door opening so that way they don't get dust on their clothes. They're also arguably smaller than the ones in West House. I personally loved my walk-in closet and I think that's one of the best parts about living in West House in terms of the room quality. But here's another perk that I like, fake wooden floors. They're not real but they're important, and here's why. New houses are made up of tile floors. This may not seem like an important difference, but during the winter time, those tiles will become cold very, very quickly. Whereas the fake wood floors, they do get cold, but definitely not as cold as those tiles. So it saves your feet in the winter and I personally love that. I would give the overall room quality of West House a D. While it doesn't seem like the end of the world, especially considering the other first year dorms I saw at other schools, I hated that the rooms were tiny, had low ceilings, and that I had little control of the temperature over my room. But I think the main reason this room gets such a low grade is because of the expectation I was given by Vanderbilt before I came in. They don't legally say this, but they give you the expectation that all the rooms at Vanderbilt for first years look like the Hank showroom. And although I do say West House is a quality house, it's not quality compared to the other options 
options that you could have been randomly placed in. However, of course, I do love the little perks that we have. I would joke about those wooden floors, I would brag about that wooden closet, and I would also brag about the really thick walls. In new houses, I know that you can hear everything that's going on through the vents, through the walls, and everything. Whereas in West House and the historic houses, the walls are definitely much thicker, so you're a lot more soundproofed. Both new and historic houses have at least two bathrooms per floor. However, some new houses have gender neutral bathrooms on each floor with a toilet and a shower. Unfortunately, West House has only two gendered bathrooms per floor and one gender neutral bathroom on the first floor only consisting of a toilet. In terms of the quality of the bathrooms themselves, I would argue West probably has some of the best bathrooms. During day, the bathroom that I would use had a window in the hallway section of it, which allowed for some natural lighting to be in there. The shower setup for me was where you'd open a curtain, there was a changing room with a bench like place for you to place your shower caddy and things and hooks outside of the shower then a shower curtain that opened up to the actual shower this is definitely not a function that every shower had for the actual stalls in the bathroom they were average although there was one stall which lock was broken the entire year <laughs> but i love the setup of the rest of the amenities in west house because they're all in one central location the basement there are two seminar rooms used for classes during the day and for studying hanging out and throwing events at night three music practice rooms one which had a piano in it, a kitchen, and laundry. Oh yeah, get this, some historic houses just don't have laundry, so they have to lug their laundry to other houses. So North House, the house across from West House, has to bring their stuff to our basement to do their laundry. This is unfortunate for North House and for the fact that laundry was often crowded. As you would assume, all new houses have laundry in their house. Although I do praise the amenities of West House, I will say you can tell that they are old, especially the kitchen definitely the kitchen, but I've seen it all. The basement flood, 24 hour plus water outages, and the countless times that the elevator broke with the occasional person stuck in it for a couple hours. So for the quality of amenities in the house overall, I give this a C. If you ask a first year or occasionally an upperclassman where West House is, Chances are they're not gonna know where it is unless they've lived there or they have a really close friend that lives there. West House is located at the very edge of Commons. Now granted, it's only like a five minute walk, but compared to some of the houses like Memorial, Hank, and Gillette, which are seconds from Commons, it's a pretty far walk. You definitely feel this difference during the heat the cold, the rain and the snow, all just trying to get food. Its location is also at the top of a hill, so when you're coming back from main campus, you get a little bit of a sweat. However, I find West House location one of the best on Commons, and this is why. The access to the real world. I'm talking leaving the Vanderbilt bubble. Dunkin' Donuts is essentially in West House's backyard. West House also has West Circle, which is the best unofficial Uber and Lyft pickup spot that steps from your door. Postmates isn't very good about West Circle, but if you put in Village at Vanderbilt, which is the apartment complex just yards away from West House, House. It's a great pickup spot for Uber Eats or Postmates. These benefits definitely ripped a hole in my wallet my first year, but in a good way. West is also the closest access to 21st Avenue. 21st Avenue is known to Vanderbilt students for its shopping, murals, and most importantly, food that's on the card. And by on the card, I mean the restaurants partnered with Vanderbilt University. We have a meal plan where you're automatically granted meal money to go use on real life restaurants for food. And a very large portion of those restaurants that are partnered with Vanderbilt are on 21st Avenue. 21st Avenue is especially important to Vanderbilt students on the weekends when the dining halls have limited menus and limited hours. I definitely saved a lot of time traveling to 21st Avenue from West House to go to places like the Grilled Cheesery, Jenny's, and Hop Dotties, while I knew friends who had to spend that extra five minutes getting across Commons to get to 21st. Also, a lot of people don't know that there is a public transportation bus stop right outside West House on 21st. You literally just walk down some stairs by West House and you're there. Vanny students get to ride any of these buses for free. I use this bus station to go to Kroger, Broadway, Green Hills Mall, Opry Hills Mall, and even the Gulch, which is an area in Nashville a little bit away from Vanderbilt that's known for their restaurants, cafes, and murals as well. You might remember that Taylor Swift commissioned a giant mural to promote her album Lover. That was in the Gulch. I even know some West House residents use these buses to get to part-time jobs a little bit away from campus that had higher paying rates than the ones close to campus. It's a great life hack that not many people know about, so I'm telling you now. Also, if you're a Blair student, this is the closest house to Blair. It's also the closest house to Highland, and it's the closest house to the rec center. So if you like exercising, good for you. Therefore, I give West House location a B plus. The only reason it loses points is just its little distance from the common center. And being on a hill is exhausting when you're lugging your textbooks back from the library. But I think that its access to the real world is super important. <laughs> 
each commons house has a head of house, which is a professor that lives in the house with you in their own apartment. They host a weekly signature event where any Vanderbilt student is open to attend. This aims to promote community within the house and build bonds. This also serves as a way for students to get to know their head of house informally, regardless of what department that professor may work in. I got to know the head of house for West House, Dr. Zeller, who works in the German and European Studies Department. I have never taken a class in German and European Studies. I don't think I plan on it. But this connection is one of the most important ones I made with a professor at Vanderbilt for sure. Dr. Zeller and I worked on so many house projects together and he's now my reference for literally anything I apply to. I loved West Quest, the signature event that Dr. Zeller would hold every week where he would bake non bread and we would all play board games together. Residents that attended West Quest not only got to know Dr. Zeller, but also other residents that lived in the house that they might not necessarily have met because they lived on different floors or in different schools, etc. In terms of events outside of the signature event, I will say that that definitely depends on your HPAC that year. HPAC is the House Programming and Advisory Council, which is a set of student leaders that brainstorm, organize, and create events for the House. I was personally House President, so I was in charge of a lot of brainstorming and curating ideas for the House to have. I like to hope that my events were entertaining, but they were made by me, so I feel like there's a bit of a bias there. But I will say that I think my favorite event that I created was West Giving. Play on words of Thanksgiving, West House, Thanksgiving, you know, isn't it cute? Basically, I went to Kroger and got more groceries than I ever have in my entire life, and then my HPAC and I prepared all this food in the kitchen in the West House basement. It's a tiny kitchen and we made food for over 100 people. So it was a little hectic, but it was really fun. We're talking turkeys, ham, green beans, mashed potatoes, gingerbread cookies, hot chocolate, and a bunch of other food that I've honestly forgotten about. We had more people attend this event than there were residents in the house. And it was all thanks to my head of house, HPAC, RAs, and myself for putting this all together. On commons, when you ask about community, most people will say that they find a stronger floor bond than they do a house bond. For my year specifically, I definitely think we had a bigger house bond. But it definitely makes sense for newer houses to have a stronger floor bond. New houses have hundreds of residents, while historic houses average about 100 or less residents. I quickly became friends with the people on my floor, and I eventually found myself in a friend group that consisted of people from each floor of the house. And these type of friend groups definitely formed because there were no common rooms on each floor of West House. Whenever residents were done for the day and wanted to hang out within the house, they would flood to the basement. But the type of bond in West House definitely varies by year, so take what I say on a year by year basis. However, the friendships and friend groups coming out of West House definitely hit different than others. I don't know if it was because of the small rooms that forced you out the lack of common rooms on each floor, making everyone go to the basement or something in the air, but they definitely were strong. So I give West House an A for community. Good job, West House, you finally got an A on something. Overall, there are plenty of pros and cons to living in West House. Its age, despite the refurbishment in 2008, definitely shows in its own special ways. But the location is prime and the community is one of the strongest on commons. I personally would not trade my time in West House to live in another commons house, whether it was another historic one or a new one. However, before I give my final score, I do want to talk again about the problems between new and historic houses and how that dynamic plays out throughout the school year. As much as I love historic houses, there is a very clear physical difference between those and the new houses. Students are randomly placed in these 10 houses on commons, and the housing fee is the same across the board for commons houses. I applaud the even financial playing field of this, do not get me wrong. However, I think it's very unfair that we're all getting the same commons experience, but on a different level in terms of quality. I asked some Vandy locals on Twitter to give their opinion on new versus historic houses in that dynamic, and one of the immediate responses I got really did stick out to me. This person says, being in a new house fostered the sense of elitism in people that was very toxic, and a house's negative reputation made residents disrespect it and their fellow residents so much more. This is very true. I remember there were stereotypes for each house. The ones that stuck out to me the most is that if you lived in Hank, you were a snob. If you lived in West, you were a weirdo. If you lived in North, you were known to be a partier and all of the negative things that come with being a partier. Oh, and the fact that during Founders Walk, one of our orientation things, we yelled at houses that didn't have laundry. We have laundry! And scoffed that we had an essential amenity that they didn't. As much as I love competition, I grinded my butt off to get to Vanderbilt. I don't know if this is the right thing to be competitive about. So given all my notes, I would give West House a C. I don't want this video to discourage anybody who has been placed in West House, has lived in West House, or will be living in a historic house in the future or right now. Believe me, I am always the one preaching that historic is better than new. But we have to admit that it is unfair that Vanderbilt has a very uneven playing field on the commons. It disguises itself as something equal and something where everyone's going to get the most quality housing and experience. I don't think it's fair to try to hide these aspects from prospective students. I just want to air out the reality of what you could be experiencing 
on commons your first year at Vanderbilt. I may not have been able to answer every single question you might have, so if you have any additional ones, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to get back to you and talk to you more about my experience at Vanderbilt. And if you have any suggestions for other Vanderbilt related videos, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want, like if you want. I don't really care. I'm just here to have fun. And thank you for watching. Bye.